Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the graph editor. Um, it's just these lines that help with your animation. And I'm gonna show you how to use them, um, just the basics of it. And so let's get started. I am going to create a new 2D animation file. Not save this one. Zoom out a bit. And let's start drawing. In this stroke object, I am going to just draw a simple little ball. I'm going to be using the circle tool. I'm going to crank this up to about 35 and pull the strength up to one and get the red one. All right, just a simple little circle for a ball. Hit return. Um, and then if you see this as a dotted line, Make sure that here in the materials, make sure that you uh, have line selected. I have a video that explains this and I'll put the link in the description. All right, so I've got my little ball. We're gonna make it bounce. Uh, and it's in this stroke object. Uh, the problem is that if we're going to animate this using tweening and the pivot point or the origin point is here. So if I wanted to rotate this, not that we're going to rotate it, but I'd like to get that pivot point right in the center of it. And so in the previous video where we animated the text, I showed you how to move this um, origin point to the center. And so we're going to do that under object mode, go to object, set origin, origin to geometry and so it'll hopefully put it right in the center of that ball and now we can start animating this ball but I'd like to put a, a reference for a floor just a line I cannot put it in here I can't just go all right I, I need a line I'm gonna select this um, black stroke and draw it because when I animate this, when I animate this object, the floor will, is going to go along with the ball, and I don't want that. So I'm gonna delete that, undo, Just I just hit Command Z, and I am going to create, go to object mode, add another object, a stroke object. I'm gonna hit tab to go to the edit mode, Select the stroke and hit the delete key. Now I've got another stroke and I can put my floor. In fact, I can rename this floor and rename this ball just to stay organized. And so on this one, on this one, I'd like to go to draw mode, get the line tool, get the uh, black stroke material make sure that we're at 35 and the strength at, at one and click hold the shift to constrain it let go and then hit return so now we've got two objects let's go to object mode we've got two objects we've got the floor and then we've got the ball if i need to move the ball the floor doesn't go with it cool i'm going to set this here so we can start the bounce so remember, this is this is not really your timeline. This is a dope sheet. I am going to move this up and reveal my timeline. It's down here. I'm on frame one. Cool. I'm going to turn on uh, auto keyframe. That means that I don't have any keyframes, but whenever I move it, um, it creates a keyframe for me. So I'm going to advance to frame 10. I'm going to put this ball right on the floor and that creates a keyframe. I'm gonna move this to frame 20, move over, and then to 30, make a second bounce right here, and then to 40, um, this is going to go out, out of frame. So if we look at the animation, in fact, let me go ahead and make the animation 40 frames long and hit play. That doesn't look much like a bounce. Uh, it looks horrible. 
So we can fix that. Let me stop the animation. I'm going to go ahead and turn off auto keyframe. I'm going to make this a little smaller because we don't need it. And then I'm going to break up this window into two. Right there. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to use this as my view. And in this one, I like to bring up the graph editor. And so here, I'd like to choose the graph editor. And it's right there, graph editor. Right now, we currently don't have anything because we don't, I haven't selected anything. But once I select the ball, you can see all these lines. And these lines represent each axis. So I'm going to open up this, the object transformation properties. And look at the location. That's where we're animating. Not really the rotation and not really the scale. And, and so here is the location. I'm going to hit the home key home uh, and that helps um, zoom everything in and you can see that the Z location is the up and down this is the Z location this is the up and down and then the X location going straight across it, this is going across the page okay so we can actually turn off all of these we don't need them we're just going to work with a Z up and down and X side to side. Okay, so, and in fact, we might just turn the X for now and then work only in the Z. I'm gonna hit the home and see if it, uh, you can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. And if you click on the scroll, scroll wheel, you can pan your scene here within the graph editor. Now. This does not look like a bounce at all. So what I'd like to do is, as I hit play, you can see that it goes like in a wave type of a deal. Uh, and these are tangents. These are your control points or your vertices. And you can see that I can manipulate these. And you can see it live here. I'm going to undo that. And so what I like to do is select on this one and break it up. If I, if I grab the right handle, you can see that the left handle also moves. And I, and I don't want that. I want this to be independent of this handle. So what I like to do is click on it and over here in key, go to handle type. And I can click on vector or free. They, they both do the same. I'm going to click on vector on this one. And then you can see that I can grab it. And now I can. And now I can um, create that curve that I was wanting to do on this one. I'm not going to do vector. I'm going to show you the difference. And there really isn't any difference. Um, handle type and free. And so what it does, it just breaks it up. And then now you can manipulate these handles freely from each other. Now, I just grab this one. And I uh, made that. And then so if we hit play, now it looks like it's bouncing. Now it looks like it's bouncing. So if I grab these, tangents, I can manipulate this as much as I want as, as the animation plays. So I can make it a little further up and I can make this bounce a little bit more snappy. Boink. You can see this, this, this one, it hits it and goes up as, as opposed to this one. This one looks a little bit more subtle. And I could do the same on this one. I can make this a little higher. And so by me working with these handles and these tangents, you can, you can modify the action 
as much as you want or as little as you want. And there it is. It's as easy as that, guys. Those are the basics for um, the graph editor. Uh, there's a lot more. Obviously, there's a lot more to learn, but these are just kind of the basics. Uh, one more thing that we could do is I am going to go to my X. I'm going to turn it on, and this is the X. If I grab everything, if I grab all of these, all of these have, have ease in and ease out. That's why you see it kind of curvy. But you can control the entire thing by interpolate mode and make it linear. It, it will get rid of the handles and it will create a linear hand, um, curve. So interpolate mode, I'm going to click on linear. And now you don't see any of those handles. Once you grab this one, you could see that I've manipulated the X and it looks like it's running into a wall here. But you can see how powerful uh, control we have with the graph editor and how you can manipulate your actions, your animation uh, with the graph editor. Hey guys, if you like the video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and I will see you on the next one. Thank you.